so welcome. My name is Gilbert Liao. I'm one of the systems engineer at Atlantis Computing, and today we're going to be discussing high availability options leveraging the Atlantis Alio virtual appliance. So what we have here is we have a uh, two-note cluster, and just to get you guys familiar with it, um, we have a two-node ESX cluster running 20 desktops as well as the Atlantis Ilio appliance. And just to show you the configuration, uh, what we've done as far as the network is we have two virtual switches, so we try to make this uh, very simple. So we have two virtual switches. We have vSwitch Zero, which is used for management, as well as the Atlantis uh, storage traffic. The second vSwitch is uh, used for management and the actual desktops themselves. So very simple. Um, typically, you want to have redundant physical NICs, uh, but in our case, due to the physical limitations, we're only using two physical NICs, uh, per, uh, one per, per vSwitch. Uh, typically, you want to have two. As far as the storage, we have uh, two data stores uh, that are going to be important. So we actually have our shared storage uh, here as well as our NFS uh, data store mount, which is the Atlantis appliance. And both hosts reflect the same exact configuration. Uh, so just to show you some of the other features as far as uh, our HA options, we actually selected <coughs> Uh, a couple of different things. So first of all, we're turning on both uh, vSphere HA as well as DRS. And as far as the options, uh, we actually turned off admission control uh, just because we don't have enough physical resources uh, to, uh, to to power on all the, the environment. So typically, most people are going to have sufficient resources. Uh, so to make sure and ensure that you have the proper amount of uh, memory and CPU uh, cycles in order to power things up. Uh, as far as the virtual machine options, uh, we actually changed the uh, VM restart policy to high. And the host isolation, we actually selected to leave them powered on. You can actually, uh, I, we do have customers that choose to power things off in the event of a network outage. Uh, but it's really whatever your best practices are. As far as virtual machine monitoring, uh, we have it disabled. Uh, we run through a number of different tests and we found that it, in our case it doesn't really help. It uh, doesn't help, we don't gain and we don't lose anything. Uh, the results are identical. As far as the default cluster settings, uh, we actually set up uh, the sensitivity to high. Uh, if you want to go in and change uh, failure interval and minimum uptime, you can actually go back and tweak that yourself. But again, uh, in our case, we didn't see uh, much of a difference. Uh, and we just leave it set to the default of high. Uh, we know there's a new option in vSphere 5 to do data store heartbeat monitoring. And what this is doing is uh, it's going out detecting uh, in the event of a disaster, it, it validates that the data store uh, is still available and it uses that to communicate uh, to the host to see if it's only a network outage or if the entire host is, is gone. Uh, so we, by default, don't uh, select any. Uh, it, again, it doesn't make a difference for us. As far as DRS, uh, best practice is to set this to conservative. Again, if you uh, switch this to aggressive, then uh, virtual machines and desktops will move back and forth if you're doing updates and, and virus scans and things along those lines. And, and typically, we like to set it to conservative. As far as uh, DRS groups, we don't change anything there. As far as the rules, uh, what we've done is we're using affinity rules to group the virtual machines as well as the Atlantis appliance. Uh, we want to group them together and have everything fail over all at the same time. 
um, again, it's it's a best practice. We we want to maintain the appliance as well as the desktops together on a, a single host. And most customers, what they'll do is they'll actually designate because of the significant storage savings. Uh, they'll actually go out and allocate an extra host and use that as a pre-designated uh, HA host. So in the event of disaster, not only does the appliance fail over, but also all the desktops that are associated with it. Like this, you're always ensuring the uh, a uh, a repeatable, highly scalable uh, desktop deployment and performance will always be uh, extremely high. So always again you want to group everything together as far as virtual machine options um, we just keep the defaults we don't make any changes to power host or any other additional option so now what we're going to do is actually simulate a failover so if we notice uh, if i select my host.43 we have all of our virtual machines. There's activity going on in the background. Uh, what you're seeing here is the Atlantis appliance. Uh, and what I've done is I logged in, ran a dstack command to look at the load, uh, uh, CPU, and time as well. And then in the background, we also have desktop one. Uh, and it has Microsoft Word running, and it's running a script, opening up applications, closing applications, and so forth. Uh, so that all of my uh, my appliance as well as my desktops are residing on host 43. And on dot 57, that is my pre-designated uh, failover host. And if you noticed, uh, there's absolutely nothing running on it as of right now. So what we're going to do is simulate an actual failover. Uh, or a disaster so let's say power supplies uh, you know you get flooding whatever the case is you lose a host so I'm going to simply reboot this host it's gonna give me a message saying it's not in maintenance and that's fine I want to hit yes and I'm going to you know, not even put in a reason and what you'll see here is uh, after typically in an HA event uh, typically after uh, two or three minutes uh, vCenter detects that there's a failure it's running all its consistency checks and things become grayed out and if you notice uh, the Atlantis applies typically within 10 seconds you actually see uh, uh, all activity on that host uh, will actually see so you can see the desktop is no longer responsive and neither is the Atlantis appliance so what's happening in the background is VMware is validating that the host is no longer available it's checking uh, it's going through a series of tests to validate uh, accessibility so we'll actually wait for this to, to take place and what will happen is things get grayed out as in any HA event and what will happen then after is once it's grayed out it validates that the host is no longer available and within a couple minutes it will then uh, fail over all the virtual machines onto this host as you see here uh, things have now been grayed out it's again validating uh, consistency, it's validating network, it's validating uh, storage and, and all the various components to uh, uh, make sure that there's an actual host failure. And once it determines that the host is, is down, uh, then typically what will happen then is desktops begin to restart. But uh, since we're adding Atlantis Ilio in the equation, uh, we want to first and foremost ensure that Atlantis Ilio comes back up first and then the desktops come up afterwards. And th that's what will actually take place. And uh, what I'll do is I'll leave these two screens on the right hand side, one showing the appliance, the other one showing the actual desktop. So I'll wait for the result to come in. So if you see now, the appliance uh, has begun to restart. And as you can see here, we're going through our boot process. And what will happen is, one of the first things we'll do is when we boot up the appliance is we will validate uh, the file system to make sure 
that uh, everything is is consistent so we'll actually go validate and depending on the size of the backend disk uh, what we'll do is check every individual block to ensure that everything is absolutely fine and once we validate the uh, the appliance then what you'll see is uh, it'll get remounted onto the surviving ESX host and once the uh, NFS rise because the mount point is is uh, added um, then you actually see the desktops will go from a disconnected state to an available state and then they will begin to restart so as you can see now the actual appliance is up and running it's ready so what I'm going to do is just log in and I'll actually start monitoring IO in the appliance itself and uh, what will happen again the desktops since the appliance is up and running uh, from a virtual center perspective and a cluster perspective there are some settings uh, of how fast an NFS mount gets added uh, we leave it as the defaults what will happen is uh, vCenter would detect that the NFS mount is back and available and it remounts the NFS mount and once it's remounted what you'll see is the desktops become available and once they become available they will then begin to restart so actually let me just hit uh, C here it's not even necessary and as you can see here now the uh, desktops become available and they will begin the reboot process as you can see now the desktops are starting to restart and with any desktop the first thing it's going to do is uh, validate that the uh, the desktop is is okay and it goes through its own consistency checks and you'll see uh, desktop one now it's starting it says uh, Windows re error recovery didn't shut down successfully and you could actually uh, select to run in safe mode or start windows normally and the default is to run uh, start windows normally and what you'll see now is all the desktops will come back up and running and you're pretty much done so very straightforward extremely easy you're leveraging the technology that you currently have in place uh, with very minimal hardware investment uh, so this concludes our our, uh, our session uh, again, suggestions are, are, uh, are welcomed, and please let us know what you think. Thank you.